Above all the grace and the gifts that Christ gives to his beloved is that of overcoming self. That is a quote by Francis Assisi. Welcome to Trina Talk. This is the podcast where guests share their stories of pursuing their passions, living a fulfilled life, and empowering others. Each week, I talk with inspiring leaders, business owners, and people with amazing stories from around the world in unscripted conversations as they share their successes and failures. This podcast is all about empowering you to keep striving in your personal and professional life. I am your host, Trina L. Martin. Hello, welcome to Trina Talk. This is episode 100. I can't believe it, but we have reached our 100th episode and it's because of you, the listener. So thank you. The topic of this week's episode is you can overcome anything. My guest this week is Cesar Espino. Cesar was born in Mexico City during a time where the country had one of its greatest foreign debts, and was going through a financial crisis. Not only was he born into a poor family, he was also born to just one parent, his mom, and never met his biological father. As a kid, he lived in a room, or what he called his house, that was about 200 square feet. This place had no running water inside, no floor, and he lived and slept directly on top of dirt. Today, Cesar's passion is to empower, educate, inspire, and aspire many through his experience and life lessons. Cesar has an MBA and has held position in corporate America. He is the author of the book, You Can Overcome Anything, Even When the World Says No. Hi, Cesar. Welcome to Trina Talk. Hey, Trina, how are you? I'm doing well. I am so happy to have you on the show. You are one of my many men who I have interviewed, and I love interviewing the men because, nice. without, you know, you men, there will be no us. So that's a good thing. Um, so we're going to just get in and talk about who you are and what made you the person that you are today. So why don't you take us on that journey? Yeah, de- definitely. Uh, first and foremost, thank you so much for having me here on your show. I really appreciate that. And uh, I want to say thank you to that. Um, so my, my journey really started uh, when I was born. And, and I always go back to this story because um, I'm originally from Mexico City. And I didn't come here uh, right, uh, the, you know, immediately when I was born. I actually came here at the age of 10. Except the first 10 years of my life were so critical. And there were this big a uh, pivotal moment in my life, right? Um, I grew up with just one parent, which is my mom. Um, I never met my bio- biological father. I'm not sure who he is, don't know his name. And quite frankly, it's okay. I'm, I'm okay with that right now. Um, and uh, growing up, you know, we didn't have anything. We didn't have anything to really, you know, fight for. I mean, really all we had was uh, just a loving family and really just a, 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 the desire of, of, of living, right? And I lived with my mom, my older brother, my grandmother in this little home. I called them home, but it was really more like 250 square feet of, of space. That was enough for the uh, four of us, right? And we lived in this little shack or, or, or little room, and it was made out of plywood. It was made out of a, a, um, sheet metal. There was no insulation. There was no electricity. There was right on top of dirt. And that's how I grew up, right? And, and my life, if you go back and, and look at my life, my life was really that. I had to start working at an early age to be able to survive. My mom decided to take her leap of faith um, just a few months, months after I, I turned four, and she decided to take her leap of faith to come to the States, leaving us behind. And, and again, that was another marking point for my life because at that point, I had to start working to be able to survive and just put in some food on the table. Uh, one thing that I always remember is that um, we uh, used to have this, this, what I call the Mexican specialty dish, which was really just a, a tortilla with a grain of salt. Mm. And that's all we had. 
but I can tell you though, that was very fulfilling, right? Like that was like, so uh, like, even now I can definitely have that, you know, just enjoy that. And, um, it said there was, there was days like that. We didn't have anything to eat except that. And we worked at a, at a flea market. We we're selling a bunch of different things that didn't work out too good. Then I say we graduated from that, uh, from that kind of business. And then we moved on to sewing clothing. So I, I have my own sewing machine as a kid. And we were so close just to be able to put some some money on the table, right? And it wasn't until the age of 10 that finally my mom was able to bring us to the States. And let me tell you, though, that was another uh, one of those things that that really changed my life. And there's a couple of lessons learned. Number one, I came at the age of 10. I didn't know anybody. I was in a, a whole new different world. Um, I didn't speak the language. I couldn't communicate with anybody. I didn't have friends. And so one thing that I go back and reflect on now is that back then I was like, I don't want to be here. Like I literally told my mom at that time, I said, I don't want to be here. Send me back to Mexico. Uh, because that's what I know, right? And if you think about it from that perspective, that's what we go through in life, right? A lot of times we uh, are so afraid of what's uncomfortable that we rather go back to what we're comfortable to, even if even if that means that's hurting you or or is some sort of mystery. And for me, that was me. I I, I literally was telling my my mom, send me back. I'm comfortable being poor. I'm comfortable working. I'm comfortable not having all that stuff. I'm comfortable being there with this group of people because I was so uncomfortable to be in this great nation, to learn the the new um, cultures, to get acclimated with, with, with this world. Right. And so that was a a lesson that, that now I see and I'm like, wow, it was, it's, it's amazing to, to, to see that, you know? And so uh, fast forward, you know, to now, you know, throughout that I've gone through a lot of different obstacles and and I have really had hit rock bottom multiple times. Um, I had a kid at the age of 15 and a half, which was another huge uh, um, life lesson, if, if you may, or, or, or discovery. Um, and uh, throughout my life, I've been going through a lot of obstacles. And, and now I decided to take my leap of faith a couple of years back. And I, um, I left a six-figure paying job to become a full-time entrepreneur. So now I'm a real estate investor. I am a uh, multiple book author, uh, international and, and national book author. And um, I also do mind coaching and, uh, and also help people with, um, with real estate uh, as a real estate investor. Wow. So that's a journey. <laughs> now, yeah. I- <laughs> You know, everybody knows on this show, I like to I like to know the journey because a lot of times people want to go on and they want to tell about all their successes and they want to do the, you know, I'm living my Instagram best life. But yeah, there, there's failures along the way and there's things that you have to go through. And that is a story, you know, within itself. So from that humble beginning of coming to the U S from Mexico city to where you are today. Like you said, you left a six figure job. What now, what did you do when you were in corporate? Yeah. So I used to work for a uh, logistics company. Uh, and really my career has been that, uh, working, uh, for, uh, freight forwarders and, and logistics companies. So I was working in the corporate, uh, corporate level. Yeah. Okay. So what was it that made you one day say, I'm leaving this and I'm going to become a full-time entrepreneur. Yeah, I, I think it comes down to uh, the idea of defining success, right? Um, a lot of people will say, well, success or, or the, 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 I guess 95% of the people will say success is based on the um, financial stability that you have, right? They, they normally uh, will look at success tied into a dollar figure. Mm-hmm. For me, it was the other side of it, right? Um, Working in in corporate America, um, again having a good job, having the opportunity to have travel all over the place. I have a master's in business administration, so I did go to school. I went through the whole traditional aspect of life, which, by the way, I feel like nowadays, you know, and I'm not, I, I'm a firm believer of education by all means. Um, perhaps now more so of a different type of education, except still getting educated. And and so we are so trained on go to school, get a good job come out of that with that job and, and hope to retire. Right. And I feel like that is not a journey. And, and, and so for me, it came down to, uh, 
a moment, a moment in my life where I'm like, yeah, I have a good job. Yes, I can travel all over the U.S. and, and the world with, with this job because they pay for it. Um, and I also get the chance to go and take my own vacation. And I wasn't content. Like there was something missing. And I think it, 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 it was the fact that it took me back to where I came from. It took me back to who I was. And, um, and, and, and I, I think for my, for my own journey, it was that it's like, there's something missing. I, I, I think there's a bigger purpose in my life and, and I call it my highest intention, my highest intention now. And I kind of defined that. And, and that's something that just like a vision statement, you can uh, change as you go in your journey. For me, it was like, I want to be able to motivate. I want to be able to empower. I want to be able to inspire other people. And I'm like, how can I do that? Um, working in this job that is paying me good, I'm not really doing that. And I also saw things in, incorporate that f- for me, it just didn't align, which was, you know, you can have somebody there working for 10, 15, 20 years, they lose their job, they lost, they lost everything and they got to start all over again. And I'm like, I don't want that to be me. You know, I, I, what is that saying? I came, I came this far, not just, to, not, not to just come this far or, or something to that extent. Right. And so for me, it was like, there's something more, there's something more and, and I need to do more for myself. And so that's when I discovered um, real estate investing. That's the first thing that I got into, which by the way, I, I, I had gotten into that um, back in 2008, 2009, uh, around the time, right before the housing market took a hit. And I got into multiple different units. I was doing uh, more of the rental aspect of them. And guess what? I lost it all. Like I, I you know, I, it would be nice if I would still have those things. I didn't. I lost all the houses that I had. I lost thousands of dollars. And then to top it off, 10 years of my of bad credit where I couldn't go and get anything. And so at one point I said, you know what? That's it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to continue to work for, for corporate or, or for whatever the case may be. And again, it just, there was that thing that, that there was ringing in the back of my head. It's like, no, there's something more for you. And I decided to go back into real estate. And finally, I decided to take my leap of faith, which was, that by itself is a different, different uh, experience too, by the way. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm listening to your story and I'm loving it because I can relate. So, mm. you know, I'm born and raised in Chicago to a, you know, single mother, First in my family, go to college, did the whole thing like you got mm-hmm. graduate degrees, checked all the boxes, but making the good money and sit up. And one day I was saying the same thing. I said, this, this is not, this is not it. This is not my destiny. There has to be something more, which caused me yeah. to go on my entrepreneurial you know, journey as well. Um, so when you say you want to motivate and inspire and empower Who do you want to touch? Who do you want to touch? And what do you want to inspire them to do? Yeah, for me, I I think is really, I feel like there's a lot of people that, um, that haven't been able to find their, their true purpose, or they haven't been able to find, uh, you know, what, what do I do next? You know, I'm, I'm stuck right now. I, I don't know how to go about the next aspect in my life. And so even looking back to, to where I came from is like, there was somebody there. If I look back, uh, I'm 40 now. So let's say 36 years ago or something like that. When I started, you know, there was somebody there in, in that body. There was that person that at one point didn't have hope, didn't have anything to, to show for. Right. And, uh, this, in, in this case, my mom, when she took her leap of faith, you know, she was looking out for herself and she was looking out for me. Right. Mm-hmm. And there was somebody that, that said, you know what? I want to give my kids a better life. Somebody had to believe in me even before I believed myself. And so for me, it's that same thing, right? Like there's people that probably don't believe in themselves now. And and you got to be able to like throw a couple of nuggets. You got to be able to throw a couple of ideas. You got to be able to give them something, right? Um, And I know that there's a lot of people that might be listening to this or or, uh, that, that are going through some sort of challenge. And I always tell people, if you're going through a challenge, make sure you're not just going through the challenge. You're actually growing through that challenge, right? You're becoming a better person. And so for me is I don't want to um, just help you uh, uh, and and give more to you because then if you're not learning from that, then in in reality, I'm actually handicapping you 
I want to be able to empower you. I want to give it to give you the tools. I want to give you, be able to give you something that you can utilize in your own journey. So for me, it's helping uh, really anyone that is is, is in a lost uh, lost uh, space or place, and and wants to uh, get or do more out of their lives. Wow, that's that's amazing. I mean, it is so fulfilling when you can help someone else. It's like the saying that they, you know, when people say, give a hand, help, you know, get, you know, lend a hand to help somebody up. Um, Mm -hmm. And not many people do that, especially in today's world. Um, It's just so much chaos going on. So it's really refreshing to see that someone is trying to give back. Now, let's talk about you have a book and it is you can overcome anything. Okay. Even when the world says no. Yes. So is that a memoir? It is. It is. Um, and uh, when I wrote the book, and, and that's another funny story, and I think it'll, it'll be, I want to share this with you if I can. Um, when Before I wrote the book, uh, I, was fa- I was being faced with a challenge, another challenge in my life. And, and that is the challenge that I think many of us are going through on our lives. And that is that little voice inside of you that tells you, Cesar, who are you? Who do you, who do you think you are? Who's going to read your book? Um, no one's going to buy it. Why even bother? And the list can go on, right? And I was faced with that challenge, very similar to what sometimes people are faced with that challenge now, because again, they don't believe in themselves and, and they talk themselves out of doing something. I was so close to talking myself out of doing that, that, um, that I had to kind of reflect a little bit and say, you know what? Let me change that. Let me change the frame a little bit. Let me look at it from a different perspective. If no one buys my book, okay, oh well, at the end of the day, I did something for me that was self-accomplishment. I accomplished something for myself, right? And so I went with that mentality. When I changed that frame, then I, I wrote the book within two months, which was pretty awesome. And the purpose of the book was like, I still want to tell my story. I want to tell where I came from. What are the different obstacles that I've I faced throughout life, whether it was having a kid at 15 and a half, coming to the States at, at 10, not knowing the language, um, having made some very uh, bad decisions and uh, being in jail a couple of times for being dumb kind of thing. Like I want it to be true. I want it to be an open book because we are humans. And, 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 and I'm not going to sit here and, and tell you this glamorous life that I had because I've gone through so many obstacles that I had to overcome. Right. And so what I wanted to do is walk you through my story, through my own life. And everybody has a different uh, life, except there might be little things. It might be a paragraph. It might be a a, a sentence, a phrase that's going to resonate with you, that is going to inspire you to really make a change in your life. And that's really what I what I uh, put on that book. Towards the end, I talked about some of the changes, some of the mind changes I had to do to overcome my own obstacles. Uh, And and, and I talk about some of the things that I'm doing now uh, to, to help me with that. So let's go there. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about some of the things that you had to do personally to overcome your adversities, right? Because you said, you know, you came here at 10, you wanted to go back home because it was easy and and it's everybody wants to stay in the comfort zone. Right. So what were some of those things? Cause I'm pretty sure, you know, you getting to a new country, not speaking the language, learning all those things that led you through life. What are some of the things that you had to do within yourself? Because you could have been someone, like you said, you ran into some trouble um, going to jail. You could have been a person that said, okay, this is my my lot in life and mm-hmm. I'm just going to continue on this path. But you didn't do that. So what did right. you have to do? Yeah, I, there, there's definitely a few of them uh, or a lot of them. And I'll give you some of them. One of the big ones, I think, is just you got to surrender. Right. And I'm not talking about surrender to the point where you give up. Surrender to understand right? What's in front of you and, and take some time to really evaluate and, and look at it from a different perspective. That for me, that was huge. The, the reason why I ended up in jail the first time is because I had a really bad temper. I didn't stop and think I didn't, um, I just acted out of, out of emotion, out of anger. And, and that was really bad. Right. Mm-hmm. And so one of them is really just surrender. L- look at things for what they are, start thinking about it from a different perspective and then evaluate, you know, what would you do if, what would be the outcome you want, right? And, and, and ask yourself that question. The, the way the human mind works is that um, 
if by nature you ask a question, the mind is trying to look for that answer, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to look for that answer, you know? And, and so it's going to start thinking about it. So you got to surrender. You, you want to be able to stop. Um, another one that I did is working on the mind. Like, I think that the mind is one of the most powerful things that we have. And guess what? It doesn't cost you anything. It's free. It comes with you when you were born, right? And so when you think about it from that perspective, there's so much you can learn nowadays specifically, like listening to your podcast, you know, getting a, a book, uh, which, okay, fine. You spend 20 bucks on a book that can really change your life. It's not a whole lot of money. And so really working on the mind and within the mind, uh, I, I use an analogy in the book is like a, um, if you want to lose weight, right? If you want to lose weight, you want to feed your, your body with the right ingredients, the right nutrients, the right food, so that you can lose that, that, that body weight. Well, it's the same thing with the mind. You want to be able to feed the, the mind with the right, in, right ingredients, such as the right programs. Stop watching TV. Like right now, there's so much BS going on, so much negativity. That is a bad program. Stop, stop watching TV. So I stop watching TV altogether. I don't watch TV anymore. Um, that's one thing that I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I, I removed that. The other one, uh, it talked about education is I started reading. Like I, I, the last time I read a book was in high school and that's because I had to for my English class. Other than that, I would never pick up a book and read. Now I make it a, 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 uh, a part of my life where, um, I read a, a minimum of two books per month. Right. So I just read and, and don't just read anything. I'm not talking about like a magazine, you know, whatever, unless that's your proficiency. I'm talking about something that's going to help you in your industry, motivate you, um, just helping your journey. Right. Something that is going to bring some value to you. Um, so I did that. Um, the other one that I did is I started creating affirmations. And, and now I actually talk about that or I, I say affirmations uh, twice uh, a day. I do it uh, as soon as I wake up and as soon as I go to sleep. Why? Well, the mind um, is most responsive 15 minutes before you go to sleep and 15 minutes after you wake up. And I'm talking about the unconscious mind. The, the mind is consisted of two, right? So the unconscious mind is most responsive on that. And so that's when you really want to be able to, uh, to do those affirmations. And don't just read them out. You, you want to feel them. You want to get the emotions into that. And that took me some time, definitely took me some time. Now, you know, I already have a system with that. So that's another thing that I did. And maybe the last nugget that I'll give you is self-love. You have to, have to, have to love yourself, right? And what I mean by that is that um, just like you want someone to treat you or you want to treat somebody, you want to, you want to treat yourself that way. So one of the things that I started doing now as part of my affirmations, when I go to sleep and I, when I wake up, I stand in front of the mirror and I say three things. I say, Cesar Espino, I love you. Cesar Espino, I thank you. Cesar Espino, I appreciate you. Now, let me tell you, that was weird when I first started doing it. I'm like, I don't want to do this, man. Like, this is weird. Now it's like, no, I look at myself and I smile and I do that. Because at the end of the day, if nobody's telling me that, I want to make sure that I'm telling myself that so that I can go about my day today, right? So it's making those changes in your life that can help you. Before this, I never did any of that. I, none of this. You know, I'm, I'm looking and I'm shaking my head. Yes, because <laughs> I do those same things. I look in the mirror and similar to you, you know, say, hey, I love you. You're smart, whatever. And yeah. it does. It really makes you feel good because especially when you've gone through life and you didn't hear that or you had mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. to treat you, um, you know, not right. You start to feel that you're not worthy. And that was mm -hmm. kind of my problem where I didn't feel that I was worthy. So I had to mm. bring that back to my life and love myself and tell myself that. So as you're going through all of your self-improvement, you know, I know there's times where you're like, you know what, I got to give up. This is not going to work. Like you said, this is, this just doesn't seem right. This is not going to work. How many times did that happen to you? And what did you do to overcome that? Yeah. And, and, and that still happens, right? I mean, well, I think we're all humans. And, and um, one thing that I say is that if you're working for profits, you're doing it wrong. You need to start working for purpose, not for profits. And so back on the day when I was working for corporate America, I was working for profits. I was working for that money to, to chase that money. Right now, I'm working for purpose. And so sometimes as an entrepreneur, 
because you're not clocking in and clocking out, you might not see that money. You may not see that money coming in. And so you have to go back and, re and remember why you started the f in, to begin with. You know, uh, why did you start working? What is the purpose? What is your vision? What are you trying to leave behind? And so that's what I do. Um, there's times that I'm like, man, this is just more difficult than I thought it was going to be. And then I start again, the, the little voice starts talking to me. Right. And uh, I, I love this because Les Brown, I listen to a lot of motivational speakers. Right. So Les Brown talks about uh, uh, one aspect where talk back to your to yourself. Like, you know, I think there was a line where he says, you know, I'm behind my bills and, and, and I have kids and you're telling me what to do. No, I'm not going to stop kind of thing. Right. It was the same thing for me. Like when I get that that feeling of giving up, I go out for a walk and I. I put in uh, YouTube and listen to Les Brown uh, or a couple other uh, motivational speakers just to really get me up and pumping. And one thing that I also do, I keep a journal. I keep things of the things that I need to accomplish and, and um, by when that I want to accomplish. So then I go back to that and say, okay, here's what I need to do. I need to stay focused because at the end of the day, I am going to make it. And I go back to the affirmations and I, and I say to myself is that at the end of the day, I am already who I'm working to be. I'm already that person. I'm just in the process. You're, you know, you've got it, you know, hit the nail on the head. You are just Mr. Inspiration and Motivation. So tell me, what does your clientele look like? Who are the people, you know, are they coming to you and saying, you know what, um, I had this rough time. Do you particularly, because I know a lot of people like to work with the youth, um, and, and I don't know if that's something that's a passion yeah. of yours, especially since becoming a father early. Um, yeah. Who who are you working with? Yeah, it, it, right right now, uh, really, uh, everybody, anybody, right? Because I feel like everybody has, uh, they're, in, they're in a particular place and everybody needs some sort of help, right? And so uh, I have, though, in the past worked primarily with uh, adults, uh, female and male. Um, and uh, part of the, 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 the clients that come to me, uh, they either have a limiting belief, right? Something that they might say, you know, uh, money is the root of all evils, per, for example, right? It's a, it's a belief that they might have, or they might have an emotion, right? Uh, I was dealing with a client uh, recently where he would get triggered by certain aspects and, and he, this anger emotion will come out all the time and that created a ripple effect, right? So I deal with clients uh, in, in different aspects, whether it's a belief, whether it's an emotion, um, or clearly just you, you have some baggages from, from the past. Um, the way the human mind works is that between the ages of zero and seven is when we pretty much absorb everything, right? And so what happens between the ages zero and seven will di dictate your, your, your future. And if you don't work on those things, then you're going to be carrying that all throughout your life, right? And so I, I work with my clients and I tap into that uh, from that aspect. And, and that's some of the things that I do. So I am an NLP practitioner, which is a neuro-linguistic programming uh, practitioner. And when I work with clients uh, on that aspect of that, I do that. I also work with clients on the accountability level where people just want someone to, be, to help them uh, be accountable for their actions. And I give them different tools and aspects that they can use. So, Cesar, where are you located? Los Angeles. Okay. So, we went through your journey, and you told me who you're working with. So, I have one question that I'm going to ask you right now. Okay. So, was it all worth it? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's funny you mentioned that. I had put a post on uh, Facebook, I think, uh, either yesterday or the day before yesterday. And I say, I am an entrepreneur, right? And this life is not for everybody. However, I wouldn't change it for, for anything. I, I, I love my journey. I love what I've done. I love what I'm doing. And again, for me, is I'm working for purpose, not for profits. And with that has come so many different things, right? Uh, going back to when I wrote my first book, I never thought I was going to write any more books. Now I have five more books. I have a book coming out next week, right? And I've been able to touch more people's lives. One thing that is very fulfilling that, that um, we kind of touched on that earlier is really helping out people. I'm getting messages from people that I don't know, that they're like, you know what, I, I heard you at Trina's talk show, or I heard you, or I saw you, your book, or something like that, and man, you've changed my, my life. You've, you've given me inspiration to do this or do that. That happened a couple of times already, not um, recently, where I inspire people to write their own book, to take action. Um, Six Seglar talks about if you give enough people what they want, you will get whatever you want, right? And so for me, it's like working on those things. 
So let's talk about your book. So you say you have what? This is number, you've got six books? I have six books, yeah. Okay, so take us through each Yeah, book. so the, the first book is uh, the You Can Overcome Anything Even When the World Says No. That's my memoir. Um, I wanted to tap into the Spanish market, so I actually took that book and translate that to Spanish uh, because I also believe that, the, just like anything, there's so many different uh, cultures, and, and they, they would need to be able to see that message. So I took that book into Spanish. So that's my second book. Um, then uh, as an entrepreneur, like I have here actually in front of me, as an entrepreneur, so this is the first book. That's the, the English book. Then you have the Spanish book right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, and then I, I decided to uh, come up with a series uh, 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 of a book, and it's how we became entrepreneurs. And that's between me and another friend of mine. And we, became, or we decided to do a book, and it's called How We Became Entrepreneurs Follow Our Leads. That's book number one. The second book is how we became entrepreneurs, the life of an entrepreneur, right? Uh, and again, it's just kind of giving people that want to get into that space ideas and, 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 and helping them into in, that journey. Um, I have, I was a uh, part of a collaboration book called Dare to be Authentic, Volume 5, Let Yourself Prosper. I was asked to be part of this project and it's really all about authenticity and just how that played a huge role in your life, right? And so that was a good project. Uh, my um, most latest project, which is going to be released next week, is You Can Overcome Anything Despite the Barriers in Life. And this book is 16 different authors talking about how they, uh, they, they were uh, overcoming life barriers. Wow. Wow. You've been a, a, a busy man, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have. I have, for sure. Wow. Okay. So, you know what? So, we're going to get into our questions. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. People get scared for, for these questions. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Who or what motivates you? Who or what motivates me? I would say for me, it's it's really my daughter, and and my uh, she has a, a son. So my daughter and my grandkid, and and it really comes down to just family, right? Um, I remember uh, when I'm, when I had my daughter, I remember telling my uh, my daughter's mom at that time, uh, my my girlfriend at that time, I said, you know what, I am gonna do whatever I can to make sure that I give my daughter everything that I didn't have, and make sure that she doesn't go through the same struggles that I did as a kid because as a kid I was working and I didn't want my daughter to have that. I didn't want her to not have toys, not have clothes, not be able to do that stuff. So she's always been my, my inspiration and motivation. Okay. Who or what, well, what demotivates you? Hmm. I don't, you know, I don't know if there's much to that. I would say probably, it comes down to myself, right? I think we are our biggest critic. And sometimes, again, uh, the voices, uh, sometimes just, there, there's an African proverb that says, if there's no enemy uh, within, there's no enemy outside that can do you no harm, right? Yeah. And so it comes down to that. I think that if, if you're, I'm, I'm, I believe that I'm very motivated, a very motivated person. Um, I take fear for what it is. At the end of the day, though, it comes down to what's going on in my head. Did I, did I push through or not? And so I am my biggest critic. Mm. When was a time that something was said or done to hurt you, but it worked out for your good? Okay. Um, I got to think about that one for one second. Uh, I, I would say one of my real estate, um, so I do real estate investing. So maybe one of my real estate uh, deals. Um, so I was approached by somebody to do a joint venture, which by the way, any entrepreneur, I think that in anything you do, sometimes it's best to do joint ventures. It, it would really help in your journey. Um, anyways, I was, I was approached by somebody to do a joint venture uh, transaction. And I didn't, I didn't think of, I didn't think it was, it was good or it was going to sit well with me. Uh, it didn't seem like an opportunity to be honest with you. And I would say at first, I was very reluctant to that. I was really pushing back on that. And at the end, I ended up joining into this joint venture. And it just turned out to be good. It turned out to be quite the opposite, right? Uh, the, the reward was a lot better than expected. Okay. What is your fear? I guess my biggest fear is 
not being able to live up to to my full potential and and being able to leave uh, some sort of legacy behind. Um, I, I really, I mean, this journey of wanting to empower and 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 the day that I'm gone, that that somebody can look back and and can find some of my work, and 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 they can utilize that to the to their own journey. So maybe my biggest fear is that, uh, you know, what I'm what I'm doing now is that really helping? Is is it really? empowering the people is it really motivating them is it really giving them that 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 life that, that i'm looking for yeah. is there a time when you wish you had done something that you didn't i would say no i mean uh, sometimes i'll go back and i'm like i wish i would have done this and that except when i think about it everything in the past led me to where i am right now right and i wouldn't change anything that i have right now like and so every every challenge i've gone through has been a lesson so i always tell people that you have to look at the past from two different angles number one it is an experience right it is a discovery it is a lesson right and you got to be able to just learn from that if if you if you go back to the past and you continue to make the same mistakes as before then you haven't learned your lesson Right. And so you have to look at the past as a nearly experience and educational uh, lesson for you. Mm. Okay, so then I guess this would be the same answer then for is there a time where you wish you had not done something? Yeah, you definitely say (laughs) same same answer. Yeah. Okay, so you talked about this a little bit um, when you were talking about your journey. But what is your definition of success? Yeah, I think success is defined by the person itself, right? It's, it's not tied into a dollar figure. Um, success to me is what is fulfilling, what makes you feel good inside, right? Um, what is something that, you know, if you're if you're to step back, whether you're a teacher, you're a janitor, you're a millionaire, it doesn't matter. Do you feel fulfilled inside? Do you feel like you are giving back or do you feel like you're in a place where, you know what? There's nothing that that can bother me at this point, right? And so for me, success is that how much fulfilling do you have inside of you? Okay. How do you recharge? Um, well, for me, I would say uh, I, I create a, 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 two things. Number one, uh, definitely I want to get my sleep, uh, uh, get enough sleep. Uh, make, making sure that I don't do something dumb the day before, and then especially if I have something going on the next morning, um, I uh, I fall with uh, affirmations. So I, I fall asleep with affirmations. I think that's a good recharge. It, it reminds me again of my journey. It reminds me again of the things that I'm doing. So I put that on the background, and then uh, I would say uh, I like to write down my my daily tasks because that that's that's a way for me to look at you know what do I have to do and what is spending and it's always good when you check that off, even if it's a small task, because it gives you that self of, uh, of accomplishment, right? So it feels good. Yeah, I love checking off lists. <laughs> what are you awesome at? I would say, I think creating relationships, definitely is one thing that I'm, that, that I, I give myself pointers for that. I, I, I am very approachable. I like to uh, mingle with people. I like to um, really uh, just create ventures and, and friendships and, and partnerships, right? And I believe of that average five. And, and so I always look for that. What is the legacy that you want to leave? The legacy I want to leave is is for people to to look back and 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 be able to find something that, I, that I've created or have done that has helped them uh, improve their life, right? Whatever that might be, right? It could be just picking up my book. It could be listening to a podcast interview. It could be just something. I want to be able to make sure that I can leave something behind for people that, again, their life gets improved upon. And then also for, 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 my, for my daughter and, and, and my family, that they can be proud of, of, you know, of me. Okay. So you want to leave something behind. Give the listeners one motivational takeaway. Okay, I would say um, I, this is a quote from Les Brown, and I really, really love this quote. Um, and he says, "If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. If you do what is hard, your life will be easy." And so, when you think about that, I think that's very powerful. 
it is easier for us to come from from the house and 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 sit on the couch, turn on the TV, look at the news. It is easy for us to eat the pizza or the hamburger. It is easy for us to not go and do the workout. It is hard for us to come home when we're tired from an eight to ten hour day. I went through that and going to your home office or whatever you have and start working on your dreams. Right, that is the hard part. It is hard to say, you know what, today I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to uh, eat bad. I'm not going to drink, whatever the case may be, right? And I, I do believe that. I believe that when you start working on that and you start working on what's hard, your life by itself is going to start becoming easier and easier and easier. Uh, the other one that I maybe I want to tie into that is make sure that you are working harder on yourself than you do on anybody else. Okay, and I'm not talking about hard labor. I'm just talking about you go to work and you give them your 100% and you come home and you're tired. And that's it. You don't do anything else. Work harder on yourself through your, you know, working on your mind, reading. Uh, if you want to write, start writing. Just write a sentence. You know, you want to do whatever you want to do. Start doing that. Work harder on yourself than you do on anybody else. That was very good. I had never heard that before, but I really like that. So Cesar, tell the listeners where they can connect with you, how they can find you, pick up your books, work with you, the whole nine yeah. yards. Yeah, the, the easiest way is you can actually go to my website is www.cesarrespino.com. C-E-S-A-R-R-E-S-P-I-N-O.com. And then from there, you can really connect to uh, anything that I do, whether it's my books, uh, my real estate coaching program, or just my mindset coaching program. And then I'm also, you know, um, social media, pretty much by that name. Okay. Well, Cesar, I thank you for joining me today. Uh, it's been a blast. I really, I mean, you really motivated me and I'm glad you're out there doing that work because there are people that need motivation. So thank you for being with me today. Thank you so much, Trina, for having me. I really appreciate you having me on your show. If you like Trina Talk Podcast, please don't forget to go out to iTunes and rate it five stars and leave a review. Also, who else in your life do you know that needs some motivation and inspiration in their lives? Don't forget to share Trina Talk with them. I hope you have a great week. And remember, if you change your mindset, you can change your life. Keep striving because success is a journey, not a destination.